the time these two teams faced. And remember, we have seen Sword play the Riven side of this Aatrox matchup, and he was made to look the fool by Keen when they played Afrika Freaks. He's on the Aatrox, he knows more about it. The Aatrox name memes, they'll be plentiful, but Sword needs to perform here and get something out of what should be great. Goodness, SKT fans are so loud in the Jumpshell Indoor Gymnasium tonight. And it's understandable, they are one game away from taking the championship with no response from Griffin thus far. Griffin now with their opportunity to try and find something and no level one shenanigans to ensue this time. No, that probably is benefit to Griffin. I think the level one in game number two was to the huge detriment of their standard comp being able to actually play through the early game. Onus has been on them three games in a row, and we'd say the same thing ab about most of the King Zone series for SKT as well. A lot of people are trying to open up strong, and SKT's been outlasting their enemies so far in LCK Spring 2019 playoffs. Let's watch this 2v2. And LS, please do chime in if you see any of the identity changing, because we were wondering, how aggressive do you play? It's not a level two spike, but the Hands and Viper were pushing, pushing, pushing with an Olaf jungle to turret dive. You can still turret dive with Elise. They never thought about freezing, which I know you're a big fan of, to try to threaten a full burst. And I think that what they want to do is maybe set something up for the Elise. We see that she's starting on her blue side jungle so that she could transition into her red and eventually maybe look to make a dive. Well, it might be clear to come in first. Exactly right. Get oh. the flash knock up, and Viper should be going down. The hands just has to watch as the Talia bites the dust. Two and a half minutes. And you read the same thing that SKT did. They look at the start from Griffin. They see the attempt to slow it down as the jungle's going to take his time to path there. We saw that in game one. We've seen that all season from Griffin. SKT read it. Level two Jarvan needs no introduction. And now that plan's out the window. Yeah, now the Talia Pantheon lane is in shambles. It's not supposed to have Talia die this early. She's not getting her support item stacked. She falls so far behind. This is the number one kill lane that Griffin's trying to get going. Well, a small piece of good news as the Nicers ring true. No summoner was used. Yeah. And if a summoner was, if Talia flashes here, then I agree with you. It's kind of done and dusted and we're thinking about what we're having for dinner. Spoilers, I think we're having uh, cream barbecue, so that's good to yeah. look forward to. But Tarzan's going to return. There will not be the very transparent turret dive. There's no warn here freeze. either. Well, we'll see whether he can run it back. Looks like Tarzan is going to give up on this one. No, moving back down. As you can see, Griffin just trying to zone them out of this one. Marta, no unbreakable. Going to be put on cooldown just yet. Is Teddy running low on mana? But Tarzan's wasting some time. Double cleanse, by the way. Yeah. Prom and Ezreal, double cleanse. They have to make this work. Tarzan is so invested in this. Well, they move on over. Viper's surfing in. The cocoon lands. The cleanse comes out, like you say. Half the health bar. Red buff's ticking. That's not enough. Here from Griffin. And Viper even takes half of his health bar from Teddy just landing some cues. And it was so awkward because, yes, you could have flashed on Pantheon to try to get the shove off. But the lane minions were pushed in perfectly for a teleport from Riven or Rise. And that could have also potentially undone them, even if they got the first bit of burst on Tamada. The double cleanse, like you pointed out, LS, was important. The shove goes wide, and it feels like SKT are the one shoving Griffin away from the podium. Well, speaking of which, Clid going to make his way towards the top side of the map. Sword did have a bit of a lead. Just a bit of a poke there. And Clid is going to be on his way as Trovi losing out on a trade massively against Faker here in the mid lane. It was Phase Rush last time we saw this uh, rise being picked up. He moves back to the Aftershock. It could be that the Righteous Glory will be coming in next. Faker being a bit of a pseudo tank here for his team as that sidestep was beautiful. It does look like Chovy, maybe keen on just trying to get some vision around the mid lane right now after having crashed in that wave. And as we look at bottom, oh Teddy. No. Oh. Sword in trouble, Infernal Chains are going to get the pullback there. Nice knock up there from Sword to even out the trade. I was getting flashbacks. 
Teddy doesn't have teleport. So he needs a recall, which means that he needs relief from his jungler. And you take a look at where Clid's pathing right now, and it has to be to bottom. This is almost an identical timing. Tarzan's coming in for the gank. Clid's pathing bottom. The Gromp is up. Is Tarzan gonna try to eat it again and then get match or counter gank? Well, it looks like Griffin do want to be able to get themselves some more turret plates. Lahens didn't have the passive up just yet as there's the cocoon. Landing onto Clid. Doesn't take a lot of damage, but gets over to the blast cone with a really nice repel. SKT have to show their hand on where their jungler is, but Griffin do the same. With both reading the same textbook and the SKT one, spoilers, it ends with a victory. If they can outlast Griffin's aggression, how about we send in more bad guys, says Griffin. This is some outnumbered stuff. This is an action movie. This yeah. is thick and fast action. If at first you don't succeed, send more dudes, is uh, the theory here for Griffin. They'll take a Gromp. Chovy's waiting. Clid's also waiting. Faker's farming so minions. Desperate. Chovy wants to come in, gets himself a Cataclysm. But otherwise, it's just a Gromp and a turret plate and a decent ultimate for Chovy. Get a pretty decent ultimate, but definitely some lost opportunity. But Griffin, they really want to force the agenda. Yep, you can see Clid, he's still here. Okay, that's a stun. Just wants to get the aftershock, but the stun comes in. Marta did land that, had landed that one, as Tarzan may have to flash to get out of this. Does so after the repel, but no one's dead. So I guess that's okay for Griffin, but they have to use so much more. Feels like Griffin are trying to force the issue. It's like they had a, a test where they have to give a speech and they're just trying to jam one idea out there, repeat it again and again, and get the person to hand the marks out on what is supposed to be a long speech to best of five, and yet they seem out of ideas already, guys. Come into what? Just the start of game number three. Yeah. And in game three, if they're panicking like this and trying to force these plays, well, let's talk about what the aftermath is. If you don't make these plays work, you're gonna have an Elise stuck on one item in the mid game, incapable of assassinating any of the members on SK Telecom. You're gonna have a Talia and a Silas doing virtually no damage. An Aatrox and a Pantheon is the only sources of physical damage. Things don't look pretty right now for Griffin as we're moving towards the mid game. And the elephant in the room of what Griffin lose today, there's the obvious. They lose the series. They are not the LCK Spring 2019 champions. They don't get the opportunity to go to MSI. Only one team, the winner of this series, will go to that big international tournament. But they actually lose something that might be bigger. And you say, Pop Pop Smithy, that's everything. Yeah. You actually also are at danger as Griffin of lo losing the benefit of the doubt from the fan base because Griffin had such a meteoric rise, talking about in promotion tournament how they were going to go on and make it all the way to Worlds. They got close, they couldn't do it. But, you know, in their first split, they made the final, and you said, guys, okay, I respect that. Then they made the Worlds gauntlet, and they lost that. And you said, okay, it's their first split, I can respect that. If they lose here as well, we've run out of benefits of the doubt, guys. We've run out of reasons to believe that Griffin will get them next time. At some point, you add any more to that, and it reminds me of coming back from Rift Rivals and not believing in King Zone anymore. I don't know whether I should believe in Sword, by the way. Let's watch this. Well, World, World Ender is going to come in, gets a decent chunk there onto Khan, who moves the heck out of here. They just wanted to pick themselves up that ultimate. Clid passing by is going to easily do so. And I want to echo your point. I mean, the only best of five that I really remember them winning was, you know, in Gauntlet runs and Kesper Cup. And that's about it for Griffin. When it counts, when it really comes down to the wire, it's something that LCK fans are so incredibly used to with Kingzone, with Afrika Freaks, with our Rift Rivals disaster that happened in 2018. We've been burnt before Papa Smithy, and surely Griffin, all new players, they can't do it to us as well. And Kingzone was supposed to be the one LS. Kingzone were the ones, to, as long as you're gaming, to beat SKT and replace them into the new era. They weren't the ones. And then Griffin, surely they were gonna be the ones so close twice over. Maybe it just has to be the old guard to get it done. Yep, it feels like the uh, MMO discussion, which is going to be the WoW killer. And uh, they all come and go. And WoW stays the same. It feels like SKT <laughs> I like is how you didn't make that. this so obvious League of Legends MOBA reference. <laughs> no, 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 you can't do that. You can't be speaking up your own game. Strushop Barrage flies forward. Tarzan takes a hell of a lot of damage. As the W's propped, he's not going to die just yet. He's just sent home with a bit of a sore back. Right now, Viper and Lehens, they're getting a lot of plates down here in bottom lane. Still four minutes to go as well. It's gonna be the third plate picked up for them, and this is really good for the Pantheon and the Talia, but it still doesn't get them out of the situation. 
that is inevitably coming to them at the 2025 minute mark. This isn't a sizable enough advantage. There isn't an advantage. Uh, Teddy's a thousand gold ahead. Well, actually, Club there's a duo are... advantage because Pantheon's 1600 right, gold ahead <laughs> from farming. This Pantheon says. How does he have 90 CS? Because literally, they tried to turret die oh at the enemy hero lane 800,000 times. <laughs> they did do that. So Pantheon got to farm very easily, <laughs> Atlas. It was on the screen. <laughs> I feel like that should have never happened. We were a bit too busy talking about MMOs and things like that. As uh, Tarzan and Clint are once again going to find one another, that is great reaction time there from Tarzan, who wants to get the cocoon off, lands it, but that's on a minion. It's not what you want, and that's the second kill for SKT. The flash from Lahem wants the kill it out. under Clint. He does so much damn damage, but just not enough. 100 health gets Clint out of there. And this just has to mentally get to you. You come so close so many times, and now, Bottom lane is going to have all the pressure relieved from them. Clint's going to get the Cloud Drake. SK Telecom are in a fantastic position here. Yep, and the fight on the top side of the map is going to continue. Valor gets Khan out of the way. You can see the Dragon was given up on there by Clint. I thought it was optimistic. Didn't have a lot of health in that old health bar that he had. This has been okay for Sword, but remember game one, Sword was actually crushing his lane. He was having a great time on the Silas into the Hecarim matchup. Hey guys, Tarzan's bot lane, pretty cool. <laughs> hey, but this hasn't happened yet. <laughs> right, Weldender does come out on the top side of the map as Khan hasn't used his yet. They're trying to fight this one out. Sword should be able to get there. Wind Slash comes in, but it's not late enough. Look at that health bar, gets himself the shield. Not enough! Sword gets the 1v1 solo kill. And I mean, that's a really key solo kill right now for Griffin. They needed that kind of pressure relief inside of this game. They're also going to be able to get the teleport most likely out of Khan unless they initiate lane swap, but I think that's going to be too slow on tempo. First turret should be going down here. Demolish prop comes forward. That's the second last plate as Teddy's trying to get rid of Tarzan. Decent damage and not enough minions now, but so much global gold picked up by Griffin. All right, who had Sword getting the solo kill in top lane in the That's pool? That's not on my bingo card. Griffin That's not even on my series. bingo card. Exactly, no one was thinking that one, but he needed to make that happen. It was as they got the Drake bot side as well. The moment that SKT takes Cloud Drake against Talia Pantheon around where Griffin have comp to be super strong early game. You're already as an analyst being like, that can't happen, that should never happen. The fact that they get a solo kill on the Aatrox side of the Riven matchup and the Drake is once again something to only keep them in the conversation, but at least the conversation isn't over at the 10 minute mark of game number three. We take a look at this replay and you can see that Khan's handshaking something he can't win, which is very uncharacteristic of him. He's trying to wait out World Ender and gets the calculation yeah. off, and then by the end he can't escape, so he's dead. But all we can say is all the information was present. He misplays it. A rare, nice moment. It's nice to hear some clear comms. They're definitely not dwelling on it. That was the most adorable half smile I've ever seen out of Sword right there. He knows how much that means to him. Fans have been saying some to mean things towards Sword and his play on carries, and he just won a carry v carry match up there, one v one against Khan. And notice what Griffin are doing. They swap their duo lane top. Remember, their duo lane two v two has so much all in threat, especially with a jungler, because the objective bot lane is gone. The objective it wasn't killing the turret. They're happy enough with one turret plate up. It was getting the Drake and getting most of the gold from turret plates. 14 minutes comes in, and now they'll also have control of the Rift Herald area, just like LS and I have been saying. You gotta keep this up anytime you fall away. Late oh. game is not your friend. Whoa, okay, Clid. He's gonna turn up. Chovy gets in here, wants to find an ultimate position, throws it out, doesn't land it on the cliff, but there's the Abdark. We've got the man drop. Lahens doesn't land the damage, but Clid has nowhere to go, and Baker can't affect anything now. This might be the Griffin turnaround. Right now, Griffin, they're looking to try to get the Rift Herald. But it doesn't look like they actually want to commit too heavy to it. It's going to end up resetting. Yeah, Sword and Khan continuing to fight, but now on the bottom side of the map. That meant that Marta and Teddy were in the area. Tarzan is going to start this one up yet again. He's trying to pull it out of range of the control ward, spotting it. Griffin know that a kill using all their ults and their globals, their long cooldown abilities, and backing away is not enough. 
with where this game is going. The Gathering Storm is in a rune. It's the SKT fans wanting to celebrate a 3-0 victory. So they need to get the objective off the back end. We start to see the potential. You don't have to hit all your buttons if you have so damn many. Yep, exactly right. Two of them landed, and that was almost more than enough. And you can just see Cliff, he didn't really have anything to do. Pantheon able to ult in behind him. He had some fancy footwork managing to dodge Chobi's ultimate there, but not quite. Ends up going down, and Griffin, they find themselves with a 2,000 gold lead here as well with Rift Herald to boot. Infernal, however, coming up in a minute and a half. That is super, super high priority. Especially for, for SKT, because they've got a scaling draft going on. That we already That's a natural thing, right? It's not scaling like the S word bad case. It's just the enemy went to Leah Pantheon, so anything scaling yeah. in reference. But what I want to talk about, because you saw Faker slow to react to Clint going down, is consider the items being done. Tier is stacking into Mana Mune, Muramana, and then Archangel Seraphs. Whenever you see Chovy versus Baker on this Silas versus Rise matchup, in the early game, Chovy dives in with a shield on his E, hits all the minions, might get some trade damage on Faker, but he shoves first, because Faker can't actually turn and do enough damage to threaten him before his item build is done. So Silas has priority to a point. So SKT are right to largely be in defensive mode. That changes when Seraphs transforms and second item completions means you can't play the lanes the same way. Well, that's gonna be the knockup. That's gonna be the stun. There's so much CT, but the seismic shove isn't enough. Aftershock is there for Baker, remember? And they turn it completely on its head. Thought he's doing a lot of damage. Flynn has to flash to get out. World Ender, probably not gonna be enough here to save Sword's life. Gets the flash, Umbral Dash gets him out of there. Flash forward from Baker though, avoids and destroys as SKT turn it around. Classic Faker eyes, they make the turn, they read Griffin, and this might be the straw that finally breaks the backs of Griffin. Yeah, well, oh, Tarzan, Tarzan getting it turned around on him as well. The stopwatch is there. They've got such low health bars. Great flash from Tarzan. He was mashing hard enough as SKT. They get out of there with the Realm Warp, and they get themselves into the Dragon. Pit. Teddy's thinking to himself, haha, great job, guys. It's <laughs> 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 just idly sitting up there. Chipping away at the turret. He's got thinking uh, about no, he's like, days. I've got a global ultimate, guys. It's How okay. Far he's Just come. make sure you fight them in a specific area. As Lahens turns up and says, This is my area, immediate cleanse. But the ignite comes in afterwards. Aftershock from solo kill for the Pantheon. <laughs> is this my solo queue? What's happening? Well, it's a kill. It's something that he can't kite away from. Flash was not going to be his savior, as that was much better from Lahens. But sadly, it might be too little, too late. When we get to the replay, we'll talk about the turn here, but SKT once again reading their opponents. And if you watch the replay here, the first thing that Atlas knows is favorite base, look at the overlapping CC. But what I know is look at the lack of damage, they don't even yeah. get through the shield. Aftershock is disgusting. And Aftershock Rise is gonna repel lots of globals and lots of early game. He doesn't even take a real health point of damage. And then guess what? Khan's in position and Griffin are in the death chamber. He was yeah. dancing underneath a World Ender Aatrox taking zero damage, flashing into turrets like just there. Resists, of course, at extra armor and MR, and shields are temporary health, so more armor and MR means those two bursts of shielding Seraphs into his passive. With all that armor and MR, he was laughing at Griffin. Look at that! Yeah, there was absolutely nothing that they could do to him, and this presents the problem that Griffin might have later on. This is a problem that Clid has right now, but Marta's gonna flash. Whoa. That is gonna deter them immediately. Chovy hijacks that ultimate. Glacial fissures now to be coming out on both sides of the rift. So now at this point, there's a little bit of breathing room. There's not any reason to really team fight. However, the Herald is gonna be looking to raise the mid tier one turret. SK Telecom can recognize, hey, we're not gonna lose the game over a hundred gold. You don't have to fight if you don't want to. Well, Khan, he's gonna start a fight here, but just immediately gets evaporated. Clint now tries to get out, locks himself in with the Cataclysm, and it's Teddy here with the damage. The Silas is going to fall. The Black Lord from Lahans gets a double on this Pantheon. Teddy turns it, gets himself the stun. Knockup comes in, and that's another one. Viper finally getting in amongst this fight. There's another one going in the mid lane, though, and Sword gets rid of Faker. Viper now trying to get out as Teddy is turning it now. It's his turn to carry. Gets another one. Sword, can he get the 1v1? And I think the answer is no. That is four for four. And even though SKT conspired to make that so competitive with Khan offering himself as a sacrifice, 
Teddy's still too strong, too early. The oh. teleport comes in. Sword, where you going, mate? Yep, I don't know. Khan is going to be here. Umbral Dash going to be available. This is really He's a wall. sneaky. Oh, oh my oh. god! He doesn't. You could not have timed that better. Oh. And he managed to get away. Oh. That was so well played. I want by the sword, sword can again. I want yeah. another one of those cheeky grins. Series can be turned by moments. The fact that they went competitive and sword gets out is a moment. Is it going to be a forgettable one or a memorable one? We'll wait and see. I know. I saw you throwing up your hands. Unless Khan just straight up died. Yes, Khan was just running into them needlessly. And this was the dangerous thing I was talking about. SK Telecom don't need to handshake this team fight. This is what Griffin wants. This is where they flourish at this point in the game. With Khan deleted, Teddy had to be a hero. He ended up missing one Mystic shot. But after that, Viper dodges one more, but Teddy still shows up really big to salvage the remains oh. of this team fight. Sword not quite able to clip him right at the very end there. And the teleport came in shortly thereafter. It's looking over the both sides of this fight. It's really important that Swords ult negated how strong Baker was as a frontliner that just turns around damage and kills you with Aftershock prop. It's important that Sword got this solo kill because if Ryze was actually able to fight with Khan and his allies, it shouldn't have gone that way. Ryze did 2,900 damage into Sword and it didn't end up doing too much. Yeah, and the extra shield damage as well coming in from Sword is effective as well given the fact that the Rise is building so many. Death Dance is completed now for Khan. Hasn't been farming up enough in comparison to Sword, though. And so Sword's going to be very close to his own. He's going back home now. We'll see whether he can complete it. 100 CS is going to be the margin between the Frostmancy and the Ezreal once again. So I have a feeling that that gold gap is going to be pretty considerable between Viper and Ted. At this Khan, point... Khan's standing on a ward, guys. Khan is standing on a ward. Yep, stun comes forward. Oh, oh he's able to get out of it with the tenacity. True shot barrage. That's going to come in. Lahens dodges it. Tower falls down mid lane and SKT. They get one back. And any moves where Khan lives and around the map, SKT get an advantage. Remember, as the gold number goes up, the advantage for SKT grows. A 50,000 gold lead, huge advantage for SKT given their scaling. We're at 40. If we're at 50 with any SKT gold lead, it's massive for them. Well, Tarzan's gonna try and make this a 50-50. Sword diving on forward, there's the man drop, Weaver's wall. All of the buttons have been pressed. Sword going down to the world end of the AoE, finally getting in there. Lahan's not doing enough damage, and Khan says the last fight was an illusion. This is a double kill, make it a triple as Toby tries to get out and just finds the backhand of an Ezreal. And maybe 2018's an illusion, because SK Telecom T1, they're on a rampage to close out this series and go to MSI. And they're swimming right up yeah. the river to this Baron. They're charging right towards the Baron, and Griffin are gonna have to watch with a gray screen as it goes over to SK Telecom. Team fight breaks out. Doesn't matter if the Avengers are here or not. SK Telecom's team composition is too durable, too tanky, and Griffin are too slow to the fight. As surprising as that is, Kobe's helping, not helping enough. Teddy wasn't there to start the fight, so Griffin says, well, we got rid of the guy who ruined us last time. Let's just try and fight without him. They still lose. That was an absolute massacre. After Khan was honestly just a free kill in the last team fight that was still even. And then there's the man on your screen screaming after his retribution does oh, Baron. be felt, and the Baron easily fell down in favor of SKT. Three minutes now as we stare down the barrel of a 3-0. I don't think anyone was predicting this. Hummel Life's coach was That's predicting true. this. That no was, one else. He was the though. guy. <laughs> he was the one guy who would be the biggest fan of SKT when it came to predictions, but you got to say, with all the coaches predicting SKT, they clearly knew something we didn't. If you looked at only hey, observable trends, SKT. Yes, there's a chance Griffin could lose. Yes, SKT yeah. has some impressive players. Whether you stared really intently or zoomed out, you could predict yeah. SKT. I think they were the underdog, but you could predict them. But a 3-0 in this manner, where SKT have been able to beat the cheese and the standard, is something that I think could only come through extra info. So hats off to them. We can see that right now, Griffin. Seem like they've been brought to their knees and to their knees, knees in tears. Yeah, feels like the Avengers combo. It was going to be their ace in the hole, but instead, it loses the first time. 
They try it a second time, as you can see right here, but it's still not working. Another man drop comes forward. They're aiming for Teddy. They won't find him. He even had cleanse. If the stun was going to come in, it's desperation from Griffin. And it's triumph for SKT as another turret falls in the mid lane. And as objectives keep falling around the map, look at the gold gap at top. And then remember that SK Telecom are the scaling team. SK Telecom are the ones with the Infernal Dragon. And you have to look at this game. And if you're a Griffin fan, you're feeling pretty sad right now. I think you already have to be thinking about how you're going to be spending that MSI time because it might have to be watching SK Telecom T1 through closed or sad eyes. They're so far behind, even more so than what already is a 5,500 gold lane. Yeah. I would call this 12,000 gold yeah. down, which yep. is a, just a game or lose situation because SKT should in every way close game number three here and lead us to a very long break until LEC can take us forward and can play multiple lanes. Baron makes enemies come to you and Griffin's trying to outnumber. So SKT decides when and how many you fight over. And if that's the case, they win just purely on comp. Well, right now, the base isn't broken just yet. Inner turrets still yet to fall bot lane and top lane as Sword wants to get himself some of this experience at least. I don't even think he's really going to be able to pick that one up. Teddy's equal level with the enemy top laner as they're starting to push this one forward. Tarzan makes his way down. The Silas is trying to get back to base to buy some sort of item. Chovy has been pretty forgettable this game. And we haven't even mentioned the fact that he took fleet footwork against Faker's Rise. Because honestly, it hasn't been a relevant champion to be talking about in this game so far. It's definitely looking like the Silas. That we yeah, sometimes. it feels like the LCK special. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I know, Poppy, you're really frustrated about it. LS, you are really frustrated often when teams pick Silas. Silas and Aatrox present yeah. in one game. What a fitting the end. LS in it. The LS-isms are rife in this game. We've also got the Avengers bottom lane that you literally yeah. invented. <laughs> well, uh. well, well, well. Keep the magnifying glass on that point, <laughs> for now at least. Uh, he's, a he's a coach, by the way. I'm a coach, coach, coach by the way. Coach yeah. Caster, by the way, yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. Well, Griffin saw something they liked, but I think in hindsight, without hearing the comms, I think that's a symptom of their read on this series, which is we can't take SKT 5v5. And this is the Griffin that was so stable, that always yeah. seemed to be able to overcome gold disadvantages and fight their way out of them. And that appears to be have been their read coming into this best of five, which to me tells me everything I need to know. If Griffin say we can't 5v5 SKT, felt like they were lost before they even opened up. And SKT have definitely confirmed that suspicion so far. We're just waiting to find out what the timer is on this one and what chance comments they have in the post-game interview. Yeah, well, feels like it at the moment. 8,000 gold is the lead, but what is the lead that Griffin were able to overcome? against Harmer Life earlier on in the season. <laughs> I don't want to call it over until it's over, gentlemen. Well, it certainly feels like it. It's over. It's over, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, this Come this on. is pretty over. This is this is the final of LCK Spring 2019. And that's the thing, right? We talked about no longer being able to hold your head high as a Griffin fan and wait for next time. You know, this is a whimper. This is yeah. a very bad way to go out. No Griffin fan can be happy with what they see, and they can only speculate as to why. They'll need answers. I think this is a right. sort of loss where Griffin has to say, this is why we did what we did. It didn't work. Sorry. Like, you kind of have to have that from Griffin because it hasn't been a competitive series. Game one was a lot of fun. It was a really good performance yeah, that on was both a good sides. Series. But now the next two, forgettable. Well, oh. Griffin is still going to try and find it here. Mandrop comes down. Repel is up. Lahan finds the flash, jumps onto Teddy, but Teddy's out of there. Can he create enough distance as Chovy has locked down Mana, but is it actually going to be enough? Well. Khan gets in, has himself the triple knockoff, dives forward, it's going to be Teddy that grabs that first kill for SKT, and now Khan is just sweeping this one under the rug. It's all too much. Faker finally gets himself one of these in these team fights, and Viper has nowhere he can be on the map. It felt like I was looking at Ghosts of Christmas Past and what this game could have been. Yep. They outnumbered it. It was the perfect play. But there's just too much gold on yeah. SKT. That's called smacking him with your wallet, Papa Whoa. Smitty. As uh, True Shot Barrage, not going to work. The Viper's still for a long time. 
see your death and see your defeat in the LCK final for Spring 2019. Spring often does this to us, gentlemen. We often get the quick ones in the early stages of the year, but this is one that I don't think anyone expected. SKT 3-0 over Griffin after their incredible